Welcome to the course introduction mm -hmm. for the course 1DV523 server based, based web, web programming. programming. Yes. Um, I think that we have met you all already, mm -hmm. or at least I have. You have been. This is Matt Slot, by the way. Uh, this is you, huh? Yeah. Uh, and we are the course coordinators of the course, uh, or course managers, maybe. Uh, course coordinators. Course I don't know. Course coordinators yeah. is the most appropriate word, I think. Yeah. Uh, Matt has been a part of the 1DV525 as well, but maybe not that yes. uh, visible. Yeah. Uh, Only might. over Slack. Yep. Uh, and today we will have a course introduction. It will be a recorded course introduction. Um, I see now that we are. If we look behind us, it's 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 yeah, it's, it's sunny. Uh, yeah, and green. <laughs> it's it's it looks like it's recorded in the summer, but it's not. I promise. Uh, it's raining and it's really gray November day outside. So um, we will probably have to change the background for yeah. the upcoming vlogs. Uh, well, today's again, on today's agenda, we will have a course introduction. We will go through the course. We will look at the course webpage, talk a little bit about what will be going on in this week and the weeks to follow, uh, and then um, ask right. questions. I, 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 I was well, almost all different kind of assignments. Yeah, what kind of assignments we will do in this course? Uh, so, let's move on to this picture then. Um, first of all, as we said, it's me, Johan Leitet, uh, together with Mats, that are course coordinators in the course. Uh, we sit here speaking English, and that is of course because we have both international and Swedish students in the course. Mm -hmm. However, if you like, we prefer, of course, speaking Swedish. So if you are a Swedish student, please feel free to ask questions and uh, contact us in Swedish. Uh, if you are writing in a, like a Slack channel where everybody could see, please, if you, if you can, use English so that everybody could take part of, of, the, of the conversation. Um, well, it's the same rules protocol that was in a 1D V525, yeah. right? Yeah, I think that everybody that is taking this course has already done the 1D V525, and this is basically just a continuation of that course. Uh, when we will, we will in in like two years, um, create a new course, and, and in that case, those two courses will be one bigger web developer course. So, so, so it's basically the same thing that you have been doing all along. So it's just the same rule supply. Uh, however, when we uh, looked at your course evaluations for the year in the 1DV525, one thing stands out and that is the tutoring sessions uh, that we we had quite, quite little tutoring sessions in the 1DV525, only one hour mostly every week. So we have changed things up a little bit uh, and added more um, more tutoring sessions in the in the course schedule. Uh, and to our help, we have Rafael that is stationed in Växjö, uh, a PhD in uh, computer science. Uh, he will supervise you on the tutoring sessions on on campus in Växjö, since most of you are taking this course from Växjö. Um, However, some of you might, I know at least two students are registered for the distance version of this course. I would appreciate if you contact me and we could find some kind of arrangement for the tutoring sessions for, uh, for, for you taking this on distance, basically. But for, for, for everyone else, there are tutoring sessions planned in the schedule. Uh, as of right now, it's four hours divided in two, two sessions a week. So two hours times two sessions a week, basically. Um, not sure that, that will be, it will be like that throughout the course. Maybe we will change things up. Depends a little bit about on, on how, how many are attending those sessions. But uh, if you have questions regarding those sessions, please contact Rafael. 
and I think that you could, maybe we have that later on, but you can find us all in Slack and you can find Raphael there as well. Mm. Uh, we also have, and this is a name that you will probably bump into quite a lot, mm. even though he's not directly a part of the course this year. Uh, John Hegerud has been the course coordinator for this course for many years, mm. for like five years or something yeah. like that. But we have moved things around and he's responsible for another course. So I and Matt stepped in and are now course coordinators of this course. Uh, but John will be in the background. He will help me uh, with some of the topics surrounding production because that is his, his, his uh, expertise area. Uh, and he will also uh, help us with the uh, uh, examinations, the oral mm. hearings in the course. So, so some of you may bump into him there. Basically, that is it regarding staff. We we prefer if you contact us on Slack. If you have anything you 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 you're thinking about, please contact us on Slack. If it's something that is yet like. Oh, I'm not sure how to interpret this uh, requirement in the assignment. Please post that in the general Slack group, or not the general, but in the, the Slack group for the course, so that everybody mm. can can answer that. Don't don't send us personal messages for that kind of questions. However, if it's a question just regarding you and your situation, uh, please feel free to to use Slack. Rather Slack than email, yeah, I guess. Definitely. Okay, moving on. Let's look at the syllabus. We will not, I mean, we will not study the syllabus in, in detail, but we will look at the, the important parts of the, the syllabus. The syllabus is also linked at the course web page, course site, so you can find it there. Main field of study, computer science. Uh, the progression is GI1F. This is a follow-up course of the 1DV525. If we look at the goals, because this is basically what the course is about. So, I mean, in, in, in the last course, 1DV525, we were all about the client. Everything we did was on the client. We, we used the server sometimes to, 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 mm. to like write a chat and, and, and get some real-time data. However, we, we, we didn't implement anything at all on the server. Uh, in this course, it's the opposite way around. We will focus mainly on, on this web server and, and writing applications for a web server. Um, of course, when we write applications for a web server, we need some kind of client that uh, consumes the data we are producing and, and, uh, and, and displays the web pages, if this is what we're doing. So, so some kind of being able to implement things on the client side is a prerequisite in this course, um, hence being the 1DV525. Mm. Okay, so let's look at the goals uh, for the course. Describe the task of a web server in different kinds of web applications. Uh, we will focus a lot on the web mm. server. And web applications. Yeah, and web applications. Not too much on web services. Mm. I'm not sure if we are if touching upon that at all in this course. I don't think so. No. Uh, so, so we will try, try to create web applications running from the web server. Uh, to be able to do this, we need a good understanding of the HTTP protocol. So describe the purpose of the HTTP protocol in different kind of web applications and their pros and cons in this context. Uh, this is basically what we will start with right in the beginning of the course. Yeah. We will deep dive into the HTTP protocol because that will be of great importance. Use Node.js, the Node.js platform and Express.js web application framework to build web applications. And this is a big part of the course. Yeah, definitely. We will use Node.js on the web server which will be probably quite familiar since it's running V8, which is the same JavaScript engine mm -hmm. that we have used probably in, in, uh, in the browser. Because we will use JavaScript throughout this course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the course is called server-based web applications. So of course we could, mm -hmm. we could be using uh, C-sharp and uh, Java. 
Java or, or PHP or Python or whatever. But in this course, we will focus on JavaScript since um, we will get quite a nice stack by, by doing yeah. that. Um, and we could, of course, do everything bare bone in Node.js. Uh, however, it's quite convenient to be able to use a framework on the server mm -hmm. side. And in this case, Express.js is probably the most known JavaScript framework uh, for server-sided applications. So we will oh, I think so. use that mm -hmm. one. But we will have some kind of orientation of other frameworks mm -hmm. as well. Um, we will develop, create, develop a create, read, update, delete, so-called CRUD application, using MongoDB to manage data persistence. Persistence, data persistence, yeah. So we will store data in a MongoDB database uh, and create a CRUD application. Uh, this is the second uh, examination yeah. assignment. Uh, we will, not sure if that is a goal on the next page. Yeah, um, we will look at things like authentication, authorization, web security, uh, different kind of attack vectors for, for, for a web application, um, cross-site scripting, injection attacks, mm -hmm. C-surf attacks, things like that. Uh, we, we will look on how to mitigate those attacks as well, of course. Um, we have one goal that says create web applications with for the context suitable architecture. Not sure how much architecture we are discussing in this course, but we will probably, I guess, maybe at least mention a few architectures, I common architectures. I think so. Maybe it has, has to do with the upcoming goal. Create server-based yeah. real-time yeah, uh, web applications. Um, we have touched upon uh, real-time applications in the in the uh, uh, 1db5.5. In this course, we will implement the server pod uh, as well. Um, looking at what protocols do we have, can we use for this, like WebSockets, for instance? Uh, and we will plan and perform the publishing of a web application created for the Node.js platform in a production environment. And we will, uh, if I'm not mistaken in this course, we will look, for instance, on the Nginx reverse yep. proxy. Uh, we will look at how to, to use a process manager to, mm. to make the applications run and, and have some kind of uh, supervision over the application. Um, environment variables, things like that. So so, so in the end, you will basically, in the third assignment, you will create a real-time web application and that will be published on our cloud service as well. We have an internal cloud service that you will use to, to publish this application. Uh, we have already spoken a little bit about the prerequisites of the course. Uh, it is the 1DV022. And Web Technology 1, 1ME321, one or equivalent. Uh, that is for our Kalma students on the mm. Web Developer Program. They will read those two courses. In your case, we have squeezed those two courses together into the introduction of Web Programming 1DV525. So you should have read that course. Doesn't mean that you need to have fulfilled the whole course. Uh, you need to have finished either Assignment 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you if you you pass the the second or third examination assignment in that course, you you are okay to register on the course. You don't need to have it one hundred percent finished. Uh, I know that some of you uh, yesterday uh, Monday you had uh, 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 what's it called in English? Vilko uh, um, a, a pre-statement pre. -statement, pre oh, yeah. You had some problems with the prerequisites. You couldn't register for the course, basically. But we have, during Monday, we, we, we uh, have, have gone through your examination. So everybody that has passed the second assi assignment, you are now uh, okay to register for this course. Uh, but if you have any problems, just, just wait till Wednesday. If you still can't register, please contact me and I will have a look why you cannot register. 
basically what what you need to be you, you should be to take this course if we don't look at the courses you, you should have some basic knowledge in html and css you should know a, a javascript the javascript language you should be familiar with the queue and the event loop in the browser uh, and you should be able to create some kind of client applications yeah, and we will be using git as well yeah yeah and you should be be quite familiar with using git by now uh, if you're not well start using it because we will use git in this course um, oh i had that on a slide i'm looking at the wrong screen mm -hmm. sorry uh yeah basically that uh, we will be using github as well link on the course web page but it's github.com slash and then the course code okay how will we do this we will uh, have the basically the same approach as in the last mm -hmm. course. It's divided into three parts. The first part is Node, Web Service, and HTTP, a more theoretical start. However, it's in, we are implementing those theoretical uh, uh, goals in an application. You will basically create a web scraper uh, that will utilize the HTTP protocol, to be able to crawl a web application, uh, look in the DOM, find some elements, r depending on what elements you will mm. crawl to another uh, site. The that, part like is, uh, that part is not an uh, oral hearing, right? Yeah, so the first part is, is not an oral hearing. Uh, the first part is just hand it in and we will give you feedback on, on your application. Just uh, like in 1DV525. Yeah, it's, the, the first it's basically the same, same thing in this course. The first one is just a hand-in. Uh, the second part is the back-end web application, web security and web architecture. And this is where we will create the crude application. Mm. Create, read, update, delete. Um, third part, real-time application, together with publishing and production. As I said, you will, if I'm not mistaken, we will create a... Um, an application that will listen for issues on, on a yeah. GitHub repository and sync those in real time and um, yeah, basically work together with GitHub to, to make this work. Um, there are scheduled activities. It's, it's not like they are, I mean, you could pretty much follow this course in, in I mean, we have, we have a, a set tempo in the course, however, since we are using pre-recorded lectures, uh, you could watch them in any pace that you like. We have though a default pace for the course and I will show that soon. It's, I'm really not sure if it's seven lectures. I think it's more right now. Seven-ish. Seven-ish, ten-ish <laughs> lectures. Um, some of them have a couple of years, uh, uh, are a couple of years old, and some of them will be uh, uh, newly recorded for this uh, version of the course to this year. And that is basically because things that we have changed, we need to re-record those things. Things like the HTTP protocol, not much <laughs> have changed in that one, so, so we could have a little bit older recordings in that way. Uh, we have the two time two hour weeks tutoring with Rafael on campus. Distance students, please contact me and we could have like an agreement on how to, to, to make the tutoring work for you. Uh, free examination assignments and two oral hearings. So it's an oral hearing for part two and part three in the course. The literature, literature, the literature, that is a hard word. Uh, we have two, 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 two course literatures. We have this eloquent JavaScript third edition by Martin Harbeke. Could it be Dutch? I don't know. Mm. Uh, those of you that are Dutch, please tell me. Um, uh, I don't think many of you have bought the paperback version of this yeah. one, but this is an online version, of course, and you find it up on the link. And uh, we will, it's not, that much left in this book. It's a couple of chapters. I so hope that this chapter 17, 20. Yeah, if they don't have changed anything. Yeah, 20 it is. It's probably 17 and 20. Yeah, yeah, mm. it is. So, so we'll make use of this one since we have it uh, from the last course. Uh, 
if you want something a little bit more uh, uh, aimed towards this course, we mm. recommend this one, Web Development with Node and Express. Well, you think it's quite old. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of new stuff is going on with Node and uh, mostly regarding the uh, module system. Yeah. Node is leaving CommonJS and going to ES. ECMAScript models. ECMAScript models, yes. Yep. And no books for that part. Yet. No. So maybe skip this one. Yeah. I mean, we, we will be utilizing, I guess, Mozilla Developer Networks to some extent, yes. at least. Um, and as you said, Node is leaving the require um, common JS modules. Just as we saw in the last course, 1DV5 to 5, however, the browsers are a little bit ahead yeah. in, 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 in the States. So we are kind of in the middle when it comes mm -hmm. to Node. Uh, if we design a new course, for next year, we will probably design it for using ECMAScript modules. Mm -hmm. But if you were to start using Node today, you will probably not be using ECMAScript modules, I guess. So, um, and you will, I mean, in this course, you could, you could, I guess you could work with either either one. You, if you like, you could work with you can, you can work with ECMAScript modules, yeah. but, but uh, then you need to configure things. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah, and uh, that can be quite hard. Yep, we will probably in the lectures use common JS still. We will. Yep, uh, and we will. Yeah, we will present a lot of resources, a lot of YouTube uh, videos, and things like that during the course. Okay. Uh, we will use a lot of tools as well which you probably already know because we've done that in the, uh, the, the last course as well. Uh, we will use Node.js. Uh, you have probably already installed that one. Uh, if you haven't just installed Node.js.com, it's today it's the current version is 13.0.1 yes. and the newest version, yeah, that is the current version. Yeah. Uh, the the la latest stable version is 12.13. Um, I guess it's okay with either one. I, I, I always I, use the current one. Yeah, I would also. I'm not sure why it says recommended LTS or later, but install the current one or update to the current version. You you will get a lot of synthetic synthetic sugar and mm. new things. And I guess in is it in the 13 that ECMAScript modules was introduced, or is it in 12. Uh, dot I think it's in. Uh, 12.10 or something 11, like that? 11 or something oh, like that. Oh, already in 11? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I can, can be wrong. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we will use Git. Nothing more to say about that together with GitHub. Uh, we, we will use Visual Studio Code. However, you are free to use any ID of your choice. Uh, every demo we are recording, we will do that using Visual Studio Code, though. Uh, Please download a Slack client if you haven't already to your computer. We use Slack a lot for communication uh, between teacher student, between students and between teachers. So, so uh, it's in Slack that the course is basically progressing. So please use Slack. Uh, you register with your LNU student email if you haven't already. If you use Slack in the last course, just continue. Uh, you can uh, join the Slack course channel. It's 1DV5 to free dash web dev. No, dash server dev, sorry. Just search channels, write in the course code, and you will find it. Um, we have a course website. Uh, we will start looking at that really soon. Um, on the course website, every static Everything that is static, every news, things like that will be presented. Mm. Um, so you can always find anything on the course web page. Uh, many of those things uh, are uh, aggregated into the Slack channel. So, so if we post an, a news, for instance, you will get a message in the Slack channel as well. Use Slack for discussions and questions, and here you can find the, the correct channel name. Um, if Good to know. So, so this is the 1DV523, and there is a course called 1DV023. 
It's not type safe. No. <laughs> um, there are different types <laughs> of courses because the one is in Swedish and the other one is in English. Okay. So that's why I, I think I intentionally <laughs> only wrote two equal signs in that case. Okay. Um, nice so, to see. Yeah. <laughs> there, there might be smaller differences, but not that many. I, I just want to, 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 to make you notice that if you see in some demos or something like that, you might see that we are pushing to 1DV023. Well, in your case, you should push to 1DV523 in that case. So ju just be aware that, I mean, there are two separate courses, but they are pretty similar. Similar, They are exactly similar. It's mm. the same syllabus, basically. So, uh, but, but 1DV023 is for the Swedish students, and that course starts after the holidays mm -hmm. in, in Janu January. Um, in this course, I can make you all glad, you have 11 weeks to finish this course. Mm -hmm. It's a 10-week course, so you have one spare week uh, for this course. Well, well if you, it's, it's a nine-week course. <laughs> It's designed, it's designed for 10 weeks. Okay. However, you have 11 weeks, but the Kalmar students will have nine weeks. Mm. You know the drill since the last course yeah, when yeah. you had nine weeks and the Kalmar students got 11 weeks. So you should feel that the tempo is a little bit slower in this course than in 1DV525. Mm. Maybe you can have a couple of days during the holidays free mm. even. I mean, but that is up to you. Uh, okay, let's look at the course web page then. Uh, it's like this, we're using CoursePress for this course. Uh, we should make it pretty simple to find stuff. Um, going from the top, you get a getting started guide. Just follow this. This is a lot of setting up Git and GitHub. Uh, one thing to remember if you haven't already, uh, we will start generate the GitHub repositories in the course uh, for you. And to be able to, to, you will get an invite basically, and you need to go to github.com slash 1db523. And on that, uh, in that repository, you will get this yellow sign. Do you want to join this organization? And you should accept, and then you will see your repositories. We will probably start generating those Thursday, well, I will well, say Thursday because okay. I'm. There's a lot of things to do this yeah, week, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and today I have a lecture later on um, this evening, and then Wednesday we have this have examinations in Vecchio, and so, so I will say Thursday, to be sure. What? Yeah, we need to. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday we ha we had to generate those. <laughs> <laughs> those uh, yeah, we did that Monday. We we remembered back. Yeah, this is so confusing. It's Monday today when we are recording, but you are looking at this on Tuesday. Um, basically, it's more or less the same thing as in the the the, the predecessor. Planning. This one is new. We, we added a planning just to make it more clear what to do each and every week in the course. Um, that lacked in the last course, I think. So, so, so we added this one. Uh, today we have the course introduction. This week you can also watch the first lecture, the Node.js platform. Uh, right now it's grayed out. And if it's grayed out in the menu on the left, that means that uh, it's not finished. Maybe I'm doing a new recording and going to publish it. Maybe I need to update some links. However, I mean, if you want to work in advanced in the uh, advanced in the course, you can uh, always look at those, even though they're grayed out. But but maybe the English version isn't there, some, something like that. As soon as I'm done, I will clear the uh, the, the, the crossed over text. Uh, next week, uh, start with the lectures about web service and HTTP, and you can start working on the assignment one next week. And it continues. Uh, deadlines. You can find them here. You have we have the free week registration rule. What's it called? It's called something else, something fancier. How? But that is we will write something about that. 
activity uh, control. Activity control. It's even called activity control in the menu. We can have a look at that. Basically, this means that you need to make at least one commit in one of your repositories by at latest 2019-11-23. If you have made one commit, push that to GitHub. Oh, from, from the start of the course? Yeah. So yeah. Co commits done what? during last year, year, for example, it's not valid. Yeah. You, if you re-registered re on the course and you have already, already passed the first uh, assignment, please make an additional commit on the second assignment or something like that, just so uh, before the activity control deadline. But more about that when it's we're, we're there. We have the deadline for assignment one, it's uh, the 27th of November. Uh, and you can see the deadline and you can see the lectures and all of those good stuff. Uh, schedule, it's it's not much in the schedule. Basically, it's the Turing sessions with Raphael you will find in that one. Come on. Why is that not working? Back. Ah. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, link to the, go the GitHub, link to the Slack channel, and link to the course syllabus if you want to look at that one. Um, you find the course coordinators and our Slack handles. Uh, you find some information about the literature. Yeah, we have previous course evaluations as well, and we are obliged to, to look at those. Uh, not much to say about this one, basically. <laughs> Only seven that attended last year's evaluation. They were pleased with the course. Mm. Uh, and I've looked through this and actually not much to say. Uh, when we have things like this, it's basically with that we didn't have any classical laboratory sessions and then it did not participate. It's basically what it says. Uh, lecture contents were good and on point. Just a shame that they happened one or two years ago. Uh, as I said, some of them will be uh, one or two or three years old. Some of them will be newly recorded and we will try to, to like exchange as needed. Uh, it gets a little distance feeling with only recorded lectures. Yes, I know we will have peer instructions. Did I say that? Nope. Nope, but we will. So I will go to Vecra, have peer instructions before the oral hearings. And you have Raphael uh, at the Turing session. So I hope that will will work for you, basically. Profile information, this is, I think you've already filled this form, filled in this form. If you haven't, you need to do that so that we know what your GitHub ID is. Um, which, which program do you attend? You can choose whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Uh, why can't I? Yeah, activity control, cloud info, we will talk more about that when we're going to the production stage. That is later in the course. Uh, we will have, uh, like, just like in the last course, I will have video logs mm -hmm. basically every week and where we will talk about the week that has been and the week to mm -hmm. come. Um, so watch out for those. They will be published on YouTube as well as news on the course webpage and aggregated um, into Slack. Uh, what day then? Fridays probably. You think so? Oh, can't, can't, Fridays or Mondays maybe. Mondays. Uh, I think Mondays because you got a... Uh, Raphael has something on Fridays, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that's in, that's in the... Yeah, yeah we will mm. see. So Fridays yeah, or okay. Mondays, something like that. Uh, you find the lectures crossed out for now. Now, uh, You find the exercises in the course. Those are mainly for, I think, the part two of the course. Uh, so when starting with the part two of the course, those could be... Well, you could... It will say in the planning when to start working with them, I guess. One, two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Study week one and two. You can start with those whenever you like, basically. Okay. This course is new for me. I'm, I'm, I'm learning uh, as we go along. The first examination assignment, uh, it's probably live. I've tried it out. You could start with this one whenever you like. However, I would urge you to watch the lectures before 
so that you don't make a lot of mistakes that you then need to go back and fix. Mm. Uh, well, something to say about, about this application, My maybe, about or, it. Or should Remem we remember that functions can return data. <laughs> okay. Mm. Remember that functions can return data. Yeah. That's the... <laughs> The hint for this week. Yes. <laughs> know what he means by that, but you will probably find out in the application. Uh, well, uh, it's been long since I was involved in this. Okay. Uh, well, it's quite common that uh, students choose to to call another function in, from in in another function in another function in another function. So, so you get some kind of recursion. That uh, kind of. Yeah. But uh, well, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, this will, if I remember correctly, this one will uh, basically, it's, it's quite asynchronous. Yeah. Uh, and you will learn asynchronous patterns mm -hmm. by working with this as uh, assignment. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't already, a sync await could probably would be a way to go, right? Uh, just not probably. <laughs> it, it, is it is the way to <laughs> go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so please, please look at that. Uh, well, we will probably introduce this one in yeah. the blog later on. Yeah. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. Yeah, we will use code standards in this course. Use standard.js. We will uh, make you document your code. If we haven't that as a requirement, we will add that, that you need to, to, to have documentation using a JavaScript document JS doc, basically. I think we or, need to have that. <laughs> yeah, we will add that because it's important. Uh, what have we forgotten? I must have it. I, 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 I don't think we have forgotten anything. It's, I mean, look at the course webpage. If something is grayed out, Please think, just. Uh, what, what about the grading then? Yeah, the grading. We can say something about that. Uh, you can find information about the grading uh, in the menu examination and grading, uh, assignment one, hand in, fail or pass, assignment two, uh, fail or pass, but we will take notes of your oral hearing on that one. If it's really good, that might be a bonus in the grade. If it's really bad, it might also degrade. Uh, assignment three uh, is an A2F, and that is what the final grade is based upon. And you can find some kind of guidance for the different grades here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically it. Uh, good luck with the course. Uh, feel free to, 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 to contact us on Slack if you have any questions. Um, Yeah. Friday. Friday is the first tutoring session with Raphael at 8. Yeah, early birds. 8, yeah, 8.15. So um, take this week to, to, to kind of get acquainted with the course, with the development environment, if you haven't already installed the latest version of Node and NPM, NPM and uh, make sure that you, you get your account on GitHub or Get, get access to, to your repositories on GitHub on Thursday. Um, that's basically it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you and good luck with the course. Bye.